This is the Kendall Report for Monday, March 23rd, 2020. Welcome, folks. I'm Bob Kendall. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and share the videos. Well, once again, we find ourselves here on a Sunday night with the markets in a near meltdown. We were down the limit. We're bounced off the limit for the time being. Focus is no longer going to be about equities. It's going to move to the debt markets. Not just the treasury market, but the municipal market. We have so many layers of massive debt around the planet right now that it's ridiculous. In fact, the total debt now totals $100 trillion. That's in this country alone. We're not even doing world debt. This is absolutely scary, especially since the decision to shut down this economy is probably the worst decision that's ever been made. I believe one of the most scary areas that we're going to have to deal with will be the insurance companies and the massive amount of annuity contracts that have been written. These all may be at risk because of the inability for municipalities and corporations and other folks not being able to pay their debt. This could topple everything. And this is a major marketplace. For many years, I've talked about not doing anything that looks like annuities. I was told there's one word that doesn't belong in a sentence when you're talking about investing, and that's guarantee. An entire industry has been built around guarantee, and now those could be at risk. And I think we have to watch several things very closely. If you start to look at all of the insurance companies, the stocks, all look the same. The insurance companies, the broker dealers, the mutual funds, everything is down about 50%. What happens from here will be critical. And my concern is that people start to panic, start to liquidate more of these assets, and the whole system starts to crumble. I know many of you have known me for quite a few years and even before the 2008 situation. During that situation, making sure that everybody understood the peril the banking system was in. Now today, we're here again, and I'm taking a very solemn tone at the opening comments today because we've never been at a more critical stage in the economy and in the markets. My biggest fear is that over the next several days, if we don't see some stabilization, that they will shut the markets down, which is possibly going to make things even worse. When governments start to intervene, try to, even the circuit breakers that were hit tonight, while they look at them as a way to control downside, it just raises anxiety even more. I've been emphasizing over and over over the past several weeks that the markets are going to respond to this fiscal stimulus and monetary stimulus in a very negative way. So far, that's been exactly what's happened. I don't see any way out of this at the moment. And now that they're locking down more and more of the country, people are getting more anxious and more nervous. Earlier today, I had a conversation with some folks and somebody brought up the fact that the end of the month on 331 will be the end of the quarter and all the statements will go out to the customers and everybody's going to see the entire reality of the carnage that just happened to their accounts. Most investment advisors that are not utilizing our system are down anywhere from 20 to 35%. 60-40 has been completely discredited in this sell-off. We've seen the bond market and equity markets just get crushed. If you're a customer of mine, you're protected. Everybody's mostly in cash. 
down between six and eight percent. But those of you watching that haven't made any drastic decisions, it's going to be a very difficult place. But it's not about charts anymore. As I said, it's not about equities. It will be about debt. And everything is going to be scrutinized very closely. High yield bonds, watch out. These things are very dangerous. And the most important thing that we're going to have to watch, we're going to need to watch the, the banks and all of the custodians, the Charles Swabs, the TDs, that I think it's possible that the TD Ameritrade and Swab merger could blow up. These stocks have dropped 50%. Swab paid quite a bit more for TD stock. If there's a clause to get out of it, they're looking at it most likely right now. So it's going to come down to who can survive and who can move forward. It's going to be a moment in the financial markets that are going to be decisive in who wins and who loses. The losers most likely will be the mutual fund companies. Ultimately, many of the small ETF companies, all these folks will most likely be going out of business. And that will happen for sure if the markets continue to decline. One of the things I'm going to talk to you about tonight is that the possibilities is for anywhere from a a 60 plus percent decline in this particular sequence. This is likely to be much bigger than it was in 2008, since we have no idea what we're dealing with yet. No idea how long the income flows to the country are gonna be shut down. This is a 22 trillion plus economy. And my guesstimate is that there's anywhere from 30 to 50% of the revenues are being shut off. The U.S. government can't print the money, $12 trillion, to make this thing work. They can't save us. There's no way. There's not enough money, and if they did save us, the fiat currency would be worthless, and we'd end up like living in Zimbabwe, where we'd have skyrocketing inflation, and the purchasing power of the dollar would just go straight down. I don't want to believe any of these things are likely, but I do want to be cautious here that cash is the only position to have. I've talked to folks quite in depth over the last week that there is no opportunity here. Cheap doesn't make it good. If it bounces, so be it. There's going to need to be a lot of consolidation before these markets are in any position to bottom and structure some sort of patterns that are likely to sustain an upward sequence. At the moment, that's not even a risk. So get rid of anything that looks like FOMO or the fear of missing out. You're not gonna miss anything. If anything, if you're in cash, you're gonna miss a lot of downside and a lot of volatility and risk for your clients and for yourself if you're an individual watching it. As I go through this presentation tonight, make sure you understand that the amount of risk that is out there is something that you should not be dealing with. The whole concept of 60-40 when the dust settles on this thing will be history. Everybody will realize that this never diversified any risk. People that talk about risk metrics will be done as well. Customers don't care about risk metrics. They care about risk. They care about losing their money. And that's what I've built my entire career. I've been in this business for 42 years. And over the last 22 years, I've been helping advisors to adjust risk and especially catastrophic risk. Tell me what asset that you own that you don't have some sort of locks on and insurance policies on. Who has a major asset in their life that has no protection whatsoever? Anybody that's doing a 60-40 strategy with a buy and hold or a passive strategy basically has a property that has no locks on it and no insurance if it burns down. This situation represents one of the major risks that has ever been presented to the financial markets. In 1929, we went down 87%. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here, but this is catastrophic at levels we've never seen before. 
the sophistication of the financial system has made it possible to grow to levels of debt, cash flows that we've never seen before, and it worked marvelously until the point where the feds and the government decided to shut the markets down. When you stop the cash flow, everything else stops as well, and everything breaks. Make sure you've got plenty of cash on hand. This is the time to do nothing. We don't even know what we're dealing with yet. We don't know where this thing ends. Stay calm, stay in cash, be a spectator, not a speculator. I'm going to be focusing in on the futures of the S&P 500 as we at least have a glimpse into what the markets look like. Currently, we're down 4.07%. And you can see on the chart, we've gapped lower again. And this pattern suggests we're going much lower. I had talked about the possibility of the markets going to 2260 and stopping there. Well, we're at 2195. They're taking out every possible number of support that there is. This is typical during a full out collapse. The last time that I've witnessed one of these was 1987 and it was relentless. And 87 was even faster than what we're seeing here. At least the tail end of 87 was. I will show you in a minute where I think these markets are going. There's about a 60% probability they're going there. Right now, if you look at the VIX, it's trading at 6604. That's telling you that markets could be down 60 plus percent, which sounds outrageous. It's actually very likely that that's exactly what's going to happen. Except for we are seeing acceleration of PPM2 and 3, and PPM1 has dissipated somewhat, but it would take a much higher close above 2400, be 300 point rally. On. This is likely, but not probable at this time. You can see this just waterfall effect. We went straight through the 200 week moving average, which is where the 2018 found support. This was no support at all. In fact, now it's been resistance as last week's high was right at the 200 week moving average. Now we're accelerating to the downside and these longer term charts are telling us a lot about what's going on and what's likely to continue to go on. PPM1 minus 3.64, PPM2 minus 1.31, PPM3 minus 0.61. The probabilities back above that 200 week moving average is less than 20%. Looking at the secular charts of the monthly, you'll see even a more grim picture. And I've talked about this briefly before, but now it's going to become a focus in that it's likely that we're going to 1600 on the S&P. That sounded like a really big number. I mentioned that last week, back when we were at the 24 handle. Now we're at the 21 handle, probably about another 25% decline. And that would put us close to the 60% decline off of the highs. And we're likely to go there because there's nowhere for it to stop. There is no support here. There's no reason for the markets to rally. It's going to be just a random situation that happens when we do find a price low, but we're a long ways from turning any of these markets daily, weekly, or monthly around and setting up some sort of bottom and setting up a short-term, intermediate, or longer-term trends. All of these trends are down and they will be down for a while. I've talked about this in detail in the past, but we're looking at at least a two to three year downward spiral. And once people get a grip on what the government's about to do, spending four and five trillion dollars, putting the Fed's balance sheet at nine to 12 trillion, is not gonna set well. And ultimately, the bond vigilantes will show up and they will crush the credit markets, which is gonna send the whole system down into a collapse. I wish I had more positive things to say, and hopefully by me just saying these things is enough to trigger a turnaround. I would love to be wrong, but everything that is on this screen, everything that I'm reviewing tells me that I'm probably not going to be wrong. I've been through four of these situations now, 1987, 2000, 2008, and now 2020. 
I'm not lucky. It has everything to do. The methodology that I'm presenting to you, I have been using since around 1984 to 85. This is when these concepts were developed. They've stood the test of time. Be smart. Don't try to speculate and don't try to, to step into these markets and try to find values on anything. The 10 year has less downward risk right now than anything. We should see some stabilization here. It's possible for us to retest that 1.3 level that we got up to. Friday, we saw some nice backing up. The real risk that you're going to start to emerge is going to be in corporate debt and municipal debt. Let's take a look at a couple municipal bond mutual funds. These are just plummeting. Money's flowing out. Everybody's liquidating. If it's got a California bond in it, it's probably really going to go down. The whole complex is under pressure, and this is why the Fed stepped in. The high yield is no better. It looks just identical. You see, it's just a collapse of prices. There's very little reason to own any of these bonds, especially along the criteria that I laid out at the beginning of the show, that all of these entities are going to be under pressure. They're not going to be, have the same kind of tax base. Everything's shut off. And that's going to be really detrimental. Looking at the yield curve, while rates have declined substantially, the yield curve remains uninverted. We are seeing many of the rates move down close to zero or going negative. The three-month is at 0.03%. The Fed did put rates at zero, so all of these, the one-month, the three-month, and the six-month are going to be very close to anywhere from 0.25 to zero going forward. Now, the longer-term issues is where the pressure is going to come in and where ultimately, ultimately is where the scrutiny will occur. My question to everyone is, if the Fed is going to bring their balance sheet to 9 to 12 trillion, this is going to be fiat money. It's going to be printing press money. But if they have to finance this debt, how are they going to finance it? Who's going to buy it? At what price? This is where the bond vigilantes will show up and most likely crush the credit markets. An unbelievable thing that they're about to do. And no one knows that it will work. I remember in 2008 wondering if what they were doing was going to work. I was in the same position there where we had cash. We weren't concerned from a money standpoint, but we were concerned about the banks and whether they would be able to survive, and some didn't, as we know. This is going to come down to the same situation, who's going to survive and who's not. Looking at gold, everyone keeps wondering, why isn't gold going up? Where's the, the hedge? And there is no hedge. We continue to see mass liquidation across the board. And when you look at the trends on a weekly basis, there's nothing positive here. The best that you can hope for if you're trying to own gold is it staying somewhere between 1475 and around 1570, so a hundred range. But as far as a new upward trend emerging, very unlikely if anything that rebound to 1570 will set the tone for another leg down. Most likely we'll see this move down to 1400, maybe in 1380 going down to the 200 week moving average. There is no safe place. There is no opportunity in anything at the moment. There will be an emergence of ideas that are going to be key to move forward with. Taking a quick look at the April contract, we traded down to $20 on Friday. This is weekly last week. And now what we're seeing is just the Momentum on the downside is huge. PPM1, minus 7.32. PPM2, minus 2.95. PPM3, 1.39. Just like all the other markets, there's not necessarily an opportunity here to own any of the stocks, the crude oil, until we see more structure in the markets that are going to tell us that there is stability. The lack of liquidity continues in all of these markets. So in closing, just know 
that the Fed can't save us, the government's going crazy, making very irrational decisions that aren't going to work, in my opinion. If they do, fine. But it doesn't look like they're making good quality decisions. They're panicking. They're just throwing money at this situation, hoping that you and I will believe in their actions, put some money back to work. It is way too risky right now. It's way too early in this scenario to know what we're dealing with. So continue to be in cash for right now. Be safe, and we'll talk to you tomorrow night.